cars that are like faster than this. <laughs> So I've got the 2011 Panamera Turbo here today. This car only has like 38,000 miles on it. It's very clean. The front end is in beautiful shape. Yeah, the whole thing's really clean. Traffic's getting pretty serious, so I'm just gonna get up the canyon right away. The number one problem with this car is uh, the paddle shifter situation, or lack thereof. This car is a 2011, and I've seen some, some reviews of this car where it does have normal paddle shifters, just normal ones, up and down. But this has the old school Porsche ones from that era, unfortunately. It's a very strange setup. They're buttons. There's a paddle on the back and a button on the front, and I finally figured it out, figured it out a couple miles ago. You have to, uh, to upshift, you can click the top one on either paddle, and to downshift, you can click the front. But it is the worst thing ever. <laughs> it almost ruins the car, and I've actually opted to, to shift with the actual shifter in manual mode for the most part. Luckily, the, the, the shifter uh, itself does have a nice feel to it, <laughs> a very nice feel. So, here we go. Ooh, watch out for these people. This car is very smooth and quiet, so it makes it deceivingly fast. I'm in second gear right here. Yeah, it's so quiet, it really, uh, it's sort of underwhelming for a, a 500 horsepower car, or 493, but that's okay. That's the point of the car. It's supposed to be luxurious, obviously. When you can actually select a gear, the transmission does shift nice and quickly. Pretty impressive. So, fourth gear, third. Let's go down into second. It is pretty quick. Yeah, it's the PDK doesn't disappoint. So, this car is all-wheel drive, but it's pretty eager to break the rear tires loose. I keep driving with it in Sport Plus. I'm sorry, it's actually not in Sport Plus yet. There we go, it comes out of it when you shut the car off. So I'm in Sport Plus here, but in any case, the car is very eager to break, break the rear tires loose. Wow. So as a result, I'm gonna be careful. 34 degrees at the bottom of the canyon. We're gonna get going here. So far, so good. The way down is gonna be a disaster, but the way up should hopefully be fine. Whoa. So the car is giving me actually a couple extra squeaks and rattles here. Now that the temperature is going down, I think it's creaking a little more. So yeah, very good power with this car. Besides the paddle shifters, the transmission is also excellent. It's all wheel drive, which is cool. Besides the X5M, this is the most powerful all wheel drive car I've driven. And uh, it's just impressive how much it can feel rear wheel drive by uh, wanting to spin those back tires. <laughs> oh, yeah, got some wheel spin. <laughs> it has nice stability control. This thing has a lot of power. And tons of torque at any RPM. It spools up pretty quickly with the twin turbo setup. It only gives you a tiny bit of turbo noise, but what you can hear sounds really nice. Wow. It's wanting to spin in second gear. That's impressive. Oh, 
looks like the car revs to about 7,000. I did hit the limiter at least once or twice trying to figure out the shifter nightmare situation, but <laughs> now I just shift with this thing. This car has a nice analog clock up on the dash. Very fancy. So the car definitely does handle extremely well, as you would expect. It has light steering, but not much steering feel. Wow. <laughs> this thing doesn't have much traction, so I'm just going to take it easy from here on out officially. Luckily the roads are dry at the moment. This car has 516 foot-pounds of torque and <laughs> it feels great. 493 horse doesn't sound like that much nowadays, but the torque is very adequate. Just enjoying third gear right here. As with most Turo rentals, the brakes need some maintenance. <laughs> yeah, at, full th at, uh, at wide open throttle, the shifts are fast enough, yet they give you a tiny bit of a jolt and throw you back in a nice way. It's a really, really good transmission, that's for sure. But yeah, it needs new brake fluid. The brakes feel mushy. It must be the original fluid. Oh, the car actually has 32,000 miles on it, so... People think it doesn't need any maintenance, but it should definitely get brake fluid ASAP. Uh, yeah, the steering wheel isn't bad at all. It's just a thin wheel and that was more the style back then, somewhat. Wow, it's a beautiful day up here. Second gear. Oops. <laughs> a little late on the shift there. It hits the limiter at like 6,800. If there was a way to take a steering wheel off a newer car or one that has the normal paddle shifters and program it to work, I would pay thousands of dollars to do that if I had one of these cars because it would be so worth it. It, it doesn't ruin the car with these buttons, but it, it sort of does. <laughs> makes a high-pitched noise with this car. Something in the the drivetrain, seemingly. At really high RPMs, something makes a little shrieking noise. Not me, a torpedo! But hopefully it's all right. Wow, this is like the fastest I've ever gotten up the canyon doing one of these reviews. Going down may be a different story, but here I am at Snowbird. Let's just mess with the power for a second here. Second... First, all right, pop the window. First gear. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's very fast, but very smooth and very quiet, so it's a nice experience. But if it were me, I would want to do something to open up the intake and make more turbo noise or possibly more exhaust noise, too. The V8 does sound really nice. It has a really good growl to it. But yeah, really, really quiet. I haven't tried yet to engage launch control. We'll see if I can do it. This car has the little adaptive spoiler on the rear of the car, 
and I just noticed when I hit like 55 or something, it popped up. Oh, it just like folded itself back up. Yep, it folded up and went back down. <laughs> cool. So it just does that over and over again, I guess. That's funny. So these seats don't hold me well enough at all. They're not aggressive. I'm not sure if there, another version was available, a sportier version, but the bolstering is very, very mild. But for, uh, for senior citizens who usually buy these cars, it's perfect. <laughs> yep, second gear on a slippery surface. This thing will break the rear tires loose easily. So it's a powerful car. This car is nothing like an F10 M5, power-wise, of course, but it has what that lacks, traction. So that's cool. Helicopter doing something over here. Hello. This interior is beautiful, by the way. It has this nice uh, wood, uh, wood-looking stuff with inlays. It's it's pretty cool. Twin turbo. <laughs> I knew those hood struts weren't good. After 10 years, they have worn out. <laughs> That's funny. It's got rusty brake rotors, too. Let me pop that thing again. I want to peek around under there. Direct injection, it says, so I'm sure it has carbon buildup problems. The owner said the car has been perfectly reliable in the three three years he's had it. Says there have been zero problems, but he's only put on about 15,000 miles. And the car is low mile. Good stuff. It's definitely a good looking car. People talk a lot of shit about the styling of these cars. I think they're mostly talking about the rear end. Overall, I think it's a very good looking car. Yeah, the rear end, uh, I can see why some people don't love it. I like it though. And I think the front end is beautiful. So I really can't fault the styling of, of the car. Well, I guess I'll take a couple of photos here and then get going back down. Cool. So I'm messing with the spoiler. It has at least three different settings. I think that's the highest setting. But uh, I'll put it back in automatic mode and make it go back down, I guess. Pretty cool. So, how do I like this car? I'm very impressed with it, but it couldn't take the place of a BMW product for me. With uh, a normal steering wheel with normal paddle shifters, that would give it a way better chance. And if you add an exhaust and maybe a tune and like if they have an intake or something I could buy I'm sure the car would be a lot better with a couple things improved yeah just a lot of little things like the light steering the thin steering wheel the the seats not being aggressive at all stuff like that it's just kind of weird this car has like scratched windows somehow I'm not sure what exactly happened to it so yeah it definitely is a, a proper super sedan I give it full respect and I do, I do love this car. Looking at values online, you can get a car like this for around $30,000, maybe $35,000 depending. This one has low miles. So that's definitely a hell of a deal for a car that originally cost about one hundred fifty dollars or 160000 I don't love the gauges in this car either. It has the tachometer in the center, which is nice, but it has a small readout, a small digital uh, readout for the miles per hour below the tachometer and it could be worse but it's just not that easy to see and it's pretty small so I'm frequently struggling to see the speed it has a speedometer which goes to 225 <laughs> 225 mile per hour speedometer I'm sure this car does close to 200 but uh, in any case it's hard to see what's actually being read indicated on that speedometer. So 
So yeah, this this old brake fluid kind of ruins the brakes. This car definitely has great brakes, but they feel terrible because of the old fluid. So yeah, yeah the pedal is slow to return. It just feels mushy. The steering wheel has a lot of wood. It's like half leather, half wood. And uh, overall, it's uh, it's pretty good. Considering these cars seem to be fairly reliable, I did a little research and it doesn't look like they have a ton of problems. So that's cool. <laughs> well, I tried. Oh, come on. Be a friend. I think any newer Panamera I would have zero complaints about. It would have the proper paddle shifters and maybe some different seat options. An F10 M5 will never have this much traction, maybe with drag radials, but overall this car just doesn't scare me like an, like an M5 does. It is a nice thing driving a luxury car around. Like I said, this isn't that quiet. It's pretty quiet, but not as quiet as the Audi I used to drive. Let me check the windows. Oh yeah, so it does have dual pane windows. Is that what they're called? It's the double layer window. You can tell by feeling the top of the window, it has two different sides to it. And that makes a, a huge difference keeping a car quiet, a huge difference. So, yep, it is nice and quiet in here. You can hear the clock ticking on the, on the dash. So this car, in typical German car style, it makes some strange high-pitched noises uh, dependent on the RPMs. So, yeah, I'm engine braking at like 3,000, and yeah, sometimes you can hear like a, a jet engine style noise, <laughs> and I'm like, what is that? So we made it down the canyon. So I can't get this thing to launch, I, I give up. <laughs> but it still gets going like a monster. Wow. All the brakes on this car keep making like a metallic plinking noise, a tinking noise. <laughs> there they go. Oh, and by the way, let's try out the back seats real quick. Okay, so sitting behind myself, I've got generous room here. Heated seats. It's an actual like bucket seat, so that's really cool. So there is good justification for losing the middle seat because these, these buckets are amazingly comfortable. They don't recline or anything, but they're very nice. And good headroom too. And like I said, it's got this wonderful uh, Alcantara or suede headliner, whatever it is. It's really beautiful. Yeah, you can tell this car cost 160 grand originally, so pretty amazing. Pretty nice. Oh well. Pretty cool. This Panamera returned 11.5 miles per gallon during testing give it a SAM score. Category, powertrain, transmission. Ignoring the lack of paddle shifters, this transmission performs well. Eight. Output. This 4.8 puts out impressive torque. Nine. Personality. Though it sounds nice, nothing is special about this setup. Six. Perceived reliability. Based on my research, this Porsche should be a good car to own. Its current owner has had no problems in three years. Eight. Category, chassis, capability. This all-wheel drive car is large with a great lift mode for clearance. It can demolish a racetrack, too. 8. Fun. This super sedan is plenty of fun, but I can't decide if I like the all-wheel drive and short gearing. 7. Safety. This car was built before the IIHS small offset frontal crash test, and is therefore a bit behind. 6. Driver inputs. The wheel is thin, and the turn signal feels cheap, but this car gets a 4 for lacking normal paddle shifters. It does ruin the car. 4. Category. Value. Maintenance. These cars seem like they're fairly routine to maintain. 7. Cost of entry. Though monstrously expensive when new, these cars depreciate nicely, like anything else. 9. Long term. Being a turbo model, this Panamera ought to be a future classic. 9. Fit and finish. This car was pretty tight, but did have a few rattling noises emerge. 8. Category. Styling. Innovation. Porsche did a great job on the sedan and made it look very distinctive. 8. Longevity. 
Though a beautiful car, the rear end does seem less timeless than the front. Five. Wow factor. As a Panamera Turbo, this car does get the respect it's due. Seven. Personality. This car looks eager to enjoy some canyon roads. I love it. Eight. Total score is 117. One point better than the Camaro SS and two points behind the F10 M5. Good stuff. Thank you for watching and happy motoring.